Yeah, man. Dude, why haven't you been playing this? I, I don't know. I, I have, I don't know. I feel ashamed. <laughs> it's. It sounds good. It sounds really good, man. Harmonix sent me this amp, the MiG-50. I want to check it out because it's pretty cool. This is a reissue of the Sobtec MiG-50 that Electro Harmonix is doing. 12X7s in the preamp, pair of 5881s in the power section, uh, external bias points, which is a really, really nice feature. And it's less than a thousand bucks. I think on Sweetwater right now, these are going for like 800, 799. And I just looked on uh, like eBay and Reverb and stuff, the used vintage MiG 50s from the 90s are going between, you know, a thousand and thirteen hundred dollars. I have a kind of a history of, with Softex. When I was interning at Rick's studio, when we were interning at Rick's studio, he had, remember the MiG 100H he had? Did you ever play through that? I ended up playing through that on a few records at Rick's and then seeing like Josh Scott over at JHS make videos about his Softex collection, which is immense, by the way. Real quick. Why are Softex cool? They have kind of a unique sound, a unique feel. Most of them are built from, you know, ex-Russian military components and stuff. And they were really cool for a long time because they were super cheap. I mean, you could pick them up for three, four, five hundred bucks back in the day. It's cool that Electro Harmonix is doing this now and keeping the price pretty attainable. Are these... Where are these made? This is made in Russia. Now combined by hand in our NYC factory from the highest quality globally sourced components. Okay, so that means they're assembled in New York, but they're using a lot of import electronic components. I think it might be a stretch to say it was made in New York. So you have a Russian inspired amp that has components from China assembled in New York. Yeah, yeah. for underground. By the way, I'm Rhett. This video is sponsored by Sweetwater. They don't know that I'm making this video. They don't have any input on this video. And as always, with everything that I do, I'm gonna share my honest and unfiltered thoughts. Uh, if you're interested in this or any of the other gear that we're gonna be using in this video, there are affiliate links in the description box below. Uh, and while you're down there, please subscribe. Do you think we should go through the, the 412 or the 212? They both have greenbacks, which I think is probably what we want. With the spirit of the Softec. Probably the 412. How does an amp behave differently depending on the number of speakers that you're using? So I'm gonna have four 25 watt greenbacks moving air as opposed to two 25 watt greenbacks moving air. Also the box is bigger. A big thing of how amplifiers sound is actually the cabinet shape, size, and material, whether it's open back or closed back, how big the box is, how many speakers are in the box. Obviously what type of speaker. When it comes to like changing the sound of an amplifier, the biggest thing you can do is change speakers and or speaker cabinets. The greenbacks in this Marshall cab are the UK made greenbacks. greenbacks. So now we have a Russian inspired amp that has Chinese components assembled in New York, New York with British speakers. Yeah, going through a British cabinet built in England. All right, so for microphones today, we're gonna be using one of my favorite combinations of microphones. So this is my AEA R92 ribbon mic. This is a ribbon mic that AEA developed uh, to handle high SPL, high volumes. So it sounds really, really nice on guitar speakers, bass amps. It's also a great kick mic. And then we're gonna pair that with my Sennheiser MD421. A classic mic combo for these more high gain sounds is a 421 and a 57. Those work really well together, but I just, I love this ribbon, so that's what we're gonna use. Why would you choose a 421 over a 57? So the 57 and the 421 do two pretty different things. The 57 is known for having that sort of upper mid-range bite, which works really, really well on guitar cabinets for that reason. Whereas the 421 is a little bit rounder and it doesn't have as much of that 
top end bite. I always think the 421 looks like it could be in Star Wars. Yeah, it looks like a like a phaser set to stun yeah. from Star Trek or something. It's like, or something on the Death Star. So are you putting both of those mics at similar places on the their cabs? No. I'm actually, I'm going to put the ribbon right in the center of the dust cap of the speaker. We're going to get most of the top end information, the high end information from this microphone. And then... I'm moving the 421 to closer to the edge of the speaker, probably about halfway between the dust cap and the edge of the speaker. And this is going to give us more of the low mid sound. And then I'm going to combine them and blend the two together to get a nice sound. And again, I'm doing this how I would actually record an amp like this. So I'm not going for the most clean or uh, transparent recording setup. I want to be able to hear what this amp does in context of an actual recording situation. Now I will say it looks comically small on top of this. This thing is 800 bucks for a 50 watt tube head. Wait, like, it's 50 watts? Yeah, two 5881s in the back in the power section. It's a lot of loud tone for 800 bucks. Yeah, so let's, speaking of loud. <laughs> What are you doing? So anytime I'm messing with a new amp, first thing I like to do with the EQ is kind of see the extremes. Like where where is, you know, like the treble control here. If I roll that all the way down, what is it doing? If I roll it all the way up, what is it doing? So the other thing too, when you're dialing in an amp, don't be afraid to just like turn something completely off. I have the bass all the way off on this thing and it's still pl plenty of low end. Sometimes players will wanna just, you know, only use the EQ control, you know, within a certain range. Like, no man, turn that all the way off. Same thing with the treble. Like if you want more attack, turn the treble all the way up, see what it does. Side note, you just did a course about like how to dial in amps. I did. Uh, we did release an amp course, shameless plug, and it's combining the sort of theory of dialing in amplifiers and understanding how amps work and translating that to your modeler. In fact, we'll put it on sale. We'll do 40% uh, off. You check the link in the description. Oh yeah, that's way brighter already. I like that. That's a nice clean sound. That's a nice like... So now on channel two, it's way brighter. So I'm gonna bring the treble back a little bit, keep the presence up, and I'm gonna add a little bass in mid-range. And this is giving me like rack and tours. <laughs> if I roll my volume down and see how it cleans up. Channel two definitely has more of that Marshall thing, like that, um, like a metal panel JMP kind of sound. Like it's got that bite, that top end sort of thing, which is really cool. Do you like channel one or channel two better? Uh, it depends on the guitar and it depends on what you're doing with it. Dude, 50 watt, all tube, assembled in America. It sounds good. I mean, dude, for 800 bucks, like, I recommend it. Doesn't have the most active EQ. That's one downside. And then also the component choices that they've made here for like the switches. Uh, I understand why they did it to save money, but this would need to be changed. I mean, every time I'm flipping this power switch, it feels like it's gonna break. And they're plastic, you know, but that's questionable. Aside from that though, it sounds really good, man. 
A pair of 5881 power tubes, 50 watts, 12AX7s in the preamps, external bias a trim adjustment. I like it. I'm gonna keep recording with it. Links are in the description, so leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. Thanks for watching. Catch you on the next one. If you're in the market for a tube amp, you have less than a thousand to spend. I didn't pick you for a Vic Firth girl. I thought you'd be more of a pro mark. Okay. <laughs> Go get it.